we now have two windows involved. We have the Me widget, which has all the slider information here. And then we have another window or widget right here, which is our OpenGL widget, which, which does all the rendering. And we have a scenario where I need to share information from this main outer widget. I need to share that information with the inner widget, the GL window widget. And the way we're going to do that is by using the model, model view control pattern. The model, well, you've probably heard this before, MVC, maybe you haven't heard it before, model view controller. The model is the data, it's the model of what we're trying to do. The view is how we're viewing the data, and the controller controls the data. You know, I really, it's kind of sad how this pattern is explained. It's it's really actually not that hard yet. When we say MVC, and especially the order that we say things in here, it confuses me up. Let's start with the controller. The controller changes the data. For example, we are going to change these light sliders. I'm going to change, hey, change the slider position to another position and that sort of thing. And so the controller will respond to that. Oh, you changed this slider. You changed that slider. You pushed a button. You did a checkbox. You did something. The controller receives that event and says, oh, you changed something. You're giving me input. You're telling me to do something. All right? And the controller says, hey, model. Let's do a down arrow. I don't know why. The model, I'll say, hey, model, change it. The light position changed, so change what value you're storing in here. I think model, model is a good word for it, but it's hard to wrap your head around at first. Basically, when I say model, think the data, right? The shared data. And then the view will read the data from the model. The view, in our case, is the OpenGL window. It's the thing that renders the scene. It's our view into the scene. We're coming up with this mathematical scene, and we're rendering it. And so the view will draw the representation of the model. In this case, all we're going to share is the light position. So I don't know, hopefully that makes sense. We need a model class to store all that shared information. I'll come over here and uh, we got GUI components. I don't know, add class. C++ class. Actually, I don't want to add a class. Let's add a struct. We'll keep it as simple as possible. New header file then I'll call it my model, or I could call it my uh, data. I don't, I don't care what you call it. I'll call it my model. My model, uh, pragma once struct uh, my model. And we'll just call it this. This is going to be a very primitive model view control pattern, by the way. But, but oh well. Uh, structs are public by nature, and so I just need float light position, ooh, light position, x, and then I need y and z, but you know, I'm really just feeling like, let's get glm in here, glm, uh, glm, hpp, and then in here I'll say vec, glm, vec3, light position. There we go. That is our basic model. That is the shared data that will be shared between the GUI that has all the sliders and the GUI that does the display, which is the open GL window. Let's go back to me widget. I'm going to pound include. Actually, we'll go over here. I need I need to instantiate the model. I need to store the model somewhere. I could do it statically out in static space, one of my compilation units, but I think in this case, I'll actually make the controller be in charge of that. A little bit. So pound include. Uh, what do I call it? Me model? Did I call it my model? Holy smokes, I didn't use me. I used my. That's interesting. I'll say my model. The model. So there we go. We've, we've said we're going to have some RAM for that. So whenever we instantiate a me widget, we, we get our model along with it. And then in the GL window, the GL window here. We'll say class my model, and then look at this. I'm going to actually have to add a constructor to MeGL window. MeGL window. Take a my model pointer model. How about the model? Let's be consistent here. Grab this constructor. Let's implement that in the compilation unit. Come over here. Oh, look at all this static data. You can tell I was just bashing this stuff together. Let's say 
Uh, me, GL, a window. Uh, actually, we'll just paste that in there. Me, GL, window. And uh, over here, curlies. And then we actually need a pointer to this inside of the me, GL, window. So we'll put that in. Oops. Put that right there. So we're going to store a pointer to the model. We've forward declared it. Uh, we'll receive that pointer here, store it here. So now the GL window, which is our view, can access the model and respond appropriately appropriately to it. I know I'm kind of, f kind of flying through this, but just bear with me. I guess we'll say colon the model, the model. Okay, we'll initialize this class's instance of the model pointer with the one that comes in. I know it looks ambiguous, but it's actually not. And then going back to me widget. A uh, new me GL window, we have to pass uh, the model here, but we have to pass the address of the model. So me widget will actually be responsible for maintaining the memory for the model, but now me widget can see the model, and me GL window through a pointer can see the model. So let me draw that again. I have the model, which is the shared data. I have the controller, which will modify the model as we receive input from the user with the sliders and then the GL window can read that model and respond appropriately appropriately to it that's called the view the GL window is our view into the world let me put that off to the side for now let me let me demonstrate here and the slider value changed the user obviously changed the value of the slider and we need to update the model appropriately and we could do it based on which slider they modified but I'm just gonna be cheap here and say, all right, the model dot light position dot uh, x gets light x slider. Uh, give me your value. See, now this is the controller updating the model. We need to do that. Oops, grab too much there. We need to do that for all of the values. So x, y, z, light y, light z. We're going to modify the up model. We're going to update the model. Then we send a signal down to the view. Hey, repaint yourself. I updated the model. View. Update the view. Change the view. Let's go to the view. This is the view. We now have the model. We're going to have to pound include the model here, though, because I only forward declared it in the previous video. Pound include. I'm not being consistent with my includes here. Pound include my model dot h. I don't know why I didn't do camera h the same way with the angle brackets. Remember the angle brackets looks for the ins additional include directories instead of just in the local file. So now that we have uh, the, the definition for my model class, now down here, what do we do the light position? Now we have a light position. Light position world. Remember we just hard coded it here and I'm trying to do it with sliders. Well now what's cool is I can say uh, my model, or the model, sorry, gets the model light position. Okay, light position world is the model light position. In fact, I don't have to have this temporary variable anymore. I could just uh, replace everywhere I have a reference to this. I could use this, but whatever. I just want to show you, I update this variable with the value that was updated by the controller, and voila, watch this. This will be... This will be kind of fun, actually. I'm going to build this, run this, hopefully no compilation errors. And we're up, and you can see the scene looks different than what we started with. And I'll slide this around, slide this around, slide that around. That's the only one doing anything. Why is that so? Because I forgot to connect the other sliders. I connected the light X slider, but when I update the Y or the Z, we don't get the signal from those sliders. So copy, paste, uh, paste, paste. And you can see this is getting kind of painful to maintain. I'll show you some tricks to fix that later. But for now, it's good to learn the basics. So now when light Y slider sends off a signal, then... We'll get that signal and respond to it. Light Z slider, same thing. Get that signal and respond to it. Okay, control F5. <laughs> the scene goes darker because uh, the light right now is at 000. I'll bring the light up 
You can see our scene responds quite nicely to that light position. This is the Y. The light's at u three units up right now. Change the X. Change the Z. And that's really neat that the scene responds appropriately. Appropriately. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm tired. The scene responds appropriately to the light position. That's really neat and really fun. It didn't take much work to do that. We just set up a simple model view controller pattern where we have this shared piece of data which is my model this and it's a simple model this will grow as we as we continue on but we have this simple model me widget updates that model okay, me widget is considered the controller in this case this is the model simple stupid data and then the gl window is the view in the gl window i say hey what is that light position let's let's use that light position and and update appropriately so anyway Pretty neat. I hope you can move your light around. We're going to do more stuff with this. You need to get some light attenuation and a bunch of other things I have notes for. It's plenty more videos coming along.